This is a tutorial video for LaserWorks software. This video is property of MBKP International, LLC. I've got the LaserWorks software installed on the computer here. Okay, open up the screen. Okay, first off, you get to, we're going to go a couple things here. I'll show you the view. All these things are generally checked to begin with. You can uncheck some if you want, but it's basically all your things here. You can right now it's got everything checked, so everything is here down at the bottom. And over to the side. We'll go over to the test thing. You can move your laser head with the Y and X axis here. You can go to the home. You can click here for the current position. Right now, that's the current position on the X and Y and the Z would be your table position. You can go home, and you'll go to the home position on the X and Y axis. You get your current position now, it should, the X and Y should read zero. Okay. You can set, this is it's jumping 20 millimeters each time, so if I, if I go that now, I get the current position again, X should be 20, or about 19.998, it's, it's real close to 20. You can adjust that, that's how much it moves every time you click it. You can adjust that to a higher setting you know, 150, 30, whatever. That's the speed at which it does it. Same thing with the, this is for the table, up-down table. It'll be the same thing as that. Basically, you're going to be on your work station here with this. We'll go over a few things on the, on this. See, this is just your, um, to increase the, decrease or increase the size of your, this is basically the the engraving table of the laser engraver and this is basically the home position where the laser head is. When you send it to the home position here, which is zero zero on the XY, that would be that red dot right there. That would be the starting home position. If you want to start from there, you can start from any position you want. And I'll actually move it over 100 and I'll start yeah, more towards the Go over a little more. I'm just moving the laser head right now to a different position around in that area right there to start off when I do do some when I do some testing. Okay. And here you can increase the size. You can also do it with the roller on your mouse if you want it to to increase the size on that. Just like so. I'm doing it with the roller on the mouse now. But let's start off by doing some text real quick. Right over here, you can pull your text up, and you just click on that, and then bring it over here, and then just double click on your mouse, uh, double left click, and then this is the size of it. This is the distance between the letters. So if you want the letters spaced out more, you'd have a higher number. If you want them, if you want them tighter together, you'd have a lower number. But we'll just do test. Okay. Now on these here, you can. You not, there's where you select it, but you're, I still got it on the to, for another word here. So you got to come over here and get it on your pointer, so you can select it. And if you go right on that little pink X there, you can drag this around and put it wherever you want. Okay, you can rotate it with this up here, 90 degrees. Now you're gonna have to click on that again. You can always go to select all if you want it to, and then you can. You can, you can also rotate it with this here. You know, just prop up a box. I'll do 180. Now we'll do it again. Do another 90 to get it back to where it was. Okay. Go back to the pointer. On this, this you um, it will let you do individual letters. Once you do it, you can do whatever you want with it. You can make it individual letters slightly bigger than the others if you want it to. Or rotate those individual letters. Whatever, and to get them all back together, you would just um, hold down your shift button and then click on each individual one, and keep holding the shift button until you get until you get them all there. And then you go up here to your group. Let's see, where's the grouping at? Oh, I'm sorry, right here. You group them together, and now you got they're not individual letters anymore. You'd have to ungroup them right there if you want to mess with the letters individually. Okay, and basically, you know, you can change the size of it, make it a little smaller. 
right now we'll just do this one word. I, again, I just adjusted the letters how I wanted them, just as a demo. But you can come in here and double click on this. It's set to cut right now. You can set it to scan or dot. And you can go into the advanced on the dot if you want to change the dot intervals. Basically, it just engraves little dots as the outline of the, the letters. And you can base those dots out depending on that. Um, scans more would be more likely. And you got your minimum and maximum power. Typically on a scan, you just do about the same on the power. Do 30% on both. Okay. Also, you could adjust the speed if you wanted to. But I'll just leave it at that. Uh, let's see here. We can add a circle from with this. You could add a square. You can do a lot. Of, again, you can select you know, to select these. You got to grab this pointer to select them. To move them around wherever you want it to. Change the angles of them. You can flip them. Let's see. Try flipping this one. Yeah, there you go. It flips on the words. Upside down. Go back with it. Again, this is just a rotate. This would just be a rotate. You can go on this thing here. You can. Uh, you can. This test is selected. You can um, do this. Now, just make it bigger so you can see it. The whole thing. But I'm using the roller on my mouse to back out of this now to get it back down to smaller. Okay. And when this screen's up like that, you can always um, grab it with this and drag it down. And just go back to your pointer. Okay, just for these three things here, if I want to start the engrave. Let's say I want to do some layers too. Right now it's just on the one, so let's, I want to do some different things. Like I want to cut these out and, and engrave that. And I want to, let's see, we'll go to a different layer. We'll just choose a layer down here. Blue for the circle. We'll go down to the square and we'll do red for the square. Okay, the test is the top one, which is black. The circle is blue and the square is red. Now you can go in each one of these individually and set the, we'll do cut on this one and we'll set the power to 15 and 15 on the minimum and 30 on the maximum. Now from what I've seen on this, the minimum is basically for when you're starting a, a cut, sometimes it will, if the minimum power is as much as the maximum, if it's the same thing, sometimes it'll burn, like starts right here and then circles around. Sometimes it, it will burn a little bit too much in that area, so you can just back the, the minimum power off a little bit to where it meets perfectly there. You can just play with it to, to, depending on what you're doing for the minimum power on it. A lot of things you just keep the power the same, like on a scan usually. Okay, but we'll set that. You can do the speed different too if you want it to. Set that to 400. And a cut. And then we'll go this square here. And we'll go into it, and I got it to dot. Let's leave it at dot. And um, we'll set the speed to 100 on that. Okay. So you got those three items. Now the way it is right now, I only got this box select selected. So if I went to the start to start engrave over here, it would just do this one. So if you want to engrave all three of those, you got to go to your edit and click select all. And then you'd hit start. And from there, you don't. You could pause it, stop it, or whatever you want to do. Let's start here. And one other thing you can do, you can download this here. Download. And I'm basically could save this. What I'm doing is I'm saving this to the to the laser engraver itself. Just call this test one is the file. Now this is this would be this work that you did here would be saved into the laser engraver. Okay, and you can just go to the laser engraver and not even have it hooked up to this um, software to your computer and just find the click on the file menu on your control panel on your laser engraver then select the file that we just saved from the from your um, LCD screen on your laser engraver and just engrave it right from your laser engraver without having it hooked to a computer. 
I'm going to exit out of this screen here. This would be a new screen here. No, so we got a new screen. Let's import an image. Come here to import. I saved. A, I just saved an image to my desktop. I'll just do it right here, a JPEG. And that is, it just blew up the screen. I, again, I can use my roller on my mouse, or I can use these here to to make it smaller. Use the rollers a little quicker. You can use this to drag it down. Again, on this, you can just if you want to go back to showing the full size of it. See, and you can go in here. You can set the power and speed. Again, on the minimum power, I'd probably go down a little bit lower, maybe 12%. Max power 30. Keep it on scan. Speed may jump it up to about 300. You'd have to play with these numbers depending on what you're engraving on, because certain things, you know, like if you're engraving on cardboard, it, you know, you wouldn't need near as much power. But if you're engraving on, you know, something a little stronger, like wood or something. You would need a um, little bit more power. Okay, and, and I set the speed a little bit lower on that. And I'll tell you the reason on that. On some of these areas where it's a lot of little bitty lines, let me, let me blow this up. Blow the clicker. When it gets tight in some of these areas where the, the engraver's going over over areas that went over before, like in this and, and some of this, where it has to do a lot of going over if the same areas kind of, instead of just a swooping line, it will go to the lower power and not burn it up so much. So if you had the same power setting on this all the way, it would go in, in certain areas like this, it would, it would burn it a little bit too much, why the, and it would, my, the clarity might not be there, why something like this would come out nicely. If you had the power set to the same, like a minimum and maximum, but if you set this minimum to a little bit lower power, it would, it would, um, it would automatically lower the power in areas like this where it doesn't need as much power. Okay, and again, you would just send that to the it's selected now, so you can just send it to the to the um, laser engraver. Right now, I got it set to engrave from current position. You can do it from ma machine zero, which is basically at the, the zero position, which is the current position. I'm not sure that the, that's not the current position right now, but it would it would engrave from zero if you use that. But I'm just engraving from the current position. That would be wherever you you set your laser head to. And you can move the laser head with the laser engraver control panel or or from here. But right now it's going to engrave just from the current position wherever the laser head is. And you just hit the start button there. It's engraving right now. I can hit pause and continue. Or I can just stop it. Again, I, let's say I want to download this to the I got everything the way I want it to and I'm going to do this a bunch of times. I can just download this to the laser engraver. Call it piece one. And that would just, I must already have that on there so we'll download it call it something else. Piece four, make sure I don't got it on there. Okay, that file success. So you know that's saved it to the laser engraver so you can go back to the laser engraver without having your computer connected to the laser engraver and just engrave directly from the laser engraver now. This file right here. Okay, I'll go through some of these things. There's some other things like um, um, obviously a line, pretty simple. Now let me back this out so you can see the full screen. You got a line where you can do points. And that's clicking with the left, the left um, button. Click with the right when you're finished, I believe. And this is, let's do. A, you can do a curved line. Do it any way you want. And this is, you can um, adjust them. Let's put that one there. I went and grabbed that one there. You can go these lines and pull them. Do whatever you want with them. If you want to change a little bit later. However you want to adjust it, whatever you're drawing. I'm just doing nothing here right now. But um, and that's like the same thing with this here. You can um drag these out and do different things with them, make it different shapes, whatever shape you want it. Okay, we got the we already went over the oval and the rectangle. That's that's the text box. It's just a point you can put in. Um, this is to delete items, obviously. 
and you need to select items, you need to go back to your select thing. You can delete that. You can delete this if you want here. And let's select that. You can again this is to flip things. Let me get it up a little bigger. Okay. And let me see if we go over a few other things, see if we got anything else here. Obviously your grouping. Go over a few of these. Some people may recognize some things. This is a just typical software for laser engravers. It's got a lot of options for you. Obviously you can do the zoom out and zoom in from here and a few other things that are up on this menu up here and your import and export stuff here and save new page vendor settings that's something you typically don't mess with but um, you need a password and you can get that from us if you do need it for some reason um, I think that's about it I just kinda wanna show you the basics of this software and just just give you a feel for it so you know what it's about and how it works I'll try to see if I forgot anything or missed something Again, you can control from here, or you can actually control the laser head from your um, control panel on your laser engraver, moving the laser head around and and the table up down table. Okay, but uh, I told you about layers down here. You can do as many layers as you want here. few other options down here on things. A lot of these things you're a lot of these things you're just gonna have to work with and familiarize yourself with the software. Just like any software, it could take a little time to, to work with it and just get the hang of everything. But that's basically it. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what the laser work software is, is like and how it works. This video is property of MBKP International, LLC.